I'm going to show you my prototyping process for making a clear bottle. We get some CAD data from a client, we SLA 3D print it, and then we clear coat it to get this beautiful bottle. My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Alfred Backpack Hanger in stainless steel and aluminum, designed by me, holds your backpack, lets you charge your phone, holds your keys. Super versatile. So I'm packing up some here that were recently sold. Thanks for those of you who've purchased recently. It really helps support the channel. The first thing I do for a 3D printed part like this is go to PCBWay.com. Select 3D printing, upload the step file, review the file, select the type of 3D printing I want, the quantity, I select the material that I want to have it printed in, and in this case, I have them clear coat the outside, I submit it, it gets reviewed by an engineer, and we're done. This is the part that shows up in the mail. Pretty nice. I had them clear coated on the outside so I don't have to deal with that part of the project. It's already done. All I have to do is sand the inside and there's some imperfections on the inside here from the 3D printing process, but we're gonna clean that up and make this thing fully transparent. A lot of times when you prototype a bottle like this, the printer will want to cut the bottom of the bottle off so that they can sand and finish the inside of the bottle. In this case, I told PCB Way, just leave the bottle alone and I'll take care of sanding on the inside. So the real trick here is, how do we get inside the bottle to smooth it out and get it ready for putting clear on the inside? My solution here is to use one of these sanding balls and you can get these at like a local hardware store. I got this at Harbor Freight and this is the finest one that they had. I think they have like, you know, maybe like 120 and then 200 and I got the 400. It's also too big so I need to cut it down so that I can get it in to the neck of the top of the bottle where the opening is to sand this. And I do this by trimming each one of them down and then reassembling the ball back in the way it was before so I can get it into the top of the bottle. Sometimes when you're doing a project like this, you need to build a special tool to get the job done. And in this case, I need to sand a flat spot into the top of the mandrel for this customized sanding ball. This drill extension is of course the perfect thing to allow me to get to the inside of the bottle. I'm gonna chuck it up in my drill press and I'm gonna put some tape onto the metal mandrel. And this tape is just to protect the bottle from being scratched by the metal on the extension of the drill. Next, I'm gonna take a really coarse file and I'm gonna kinda of shape the ball a little bit to make it smoother and more uniform so I can get a good finish on the inside of the bottle. Yep, it fits. I fill the bottle up with water. This keeps the plastic cool from getting too warm from the friction generated by the sanding ball and it keeps the dust down. I am wearing a respirator just to be safe, but this works really, really well. It allows me to also see through the plastic a little bit better and see where I need to sand and this is extremely helpful. Now I really take my time to sand and finish the inside of the bottle. My goal here is to get a nice uniform finish all the way around on the inside of this bottle. I bet I'd take a good 20, 25 minutes to finish the inside of the bottle and make it nice and get it to the level that I want. Once I dump the water out, and get it dry, then I can see if there's any imperfections left on the inside of the bottle. Mainly, they are down at the very bottom 
where the sanding ball couldn't really reach into the corner. That's practically uh, 90 degrees. So we need to get down in there and finish that to the same level as the rest of the bottle. I'm going to take a paint stick and put on a little piece of this green scrubby pad so that I can reach down into the corner and try to finish that to the, le the same level of finish as everything else. Once I'm done with that and I'm happy with the uniform finish, take a look at everything, see if anything else needs to be touched up, and that looks pretty good, and I think that's going to give us a good inside finish. I'm going to mix up some two-part urethane automotive clear coat. And in this case, I'm using this shop line product made by PPG. Any good two-part urethane clear coat, automotive grade is going to be fine. Here I'm putting the hardener in it. You mix that at a certain ratio. I will leave a link in the description below to a urethane primer uh, with an Amazon link. You mix that up really nice and good. Now, since I can't spray paint the inside of the bottle, I'm just gonna pour the clear coat into the bottle and we're gonna slowly turn the bottle around to make sure that we get a nice, uniform coating on the inside of the bottle. I also do this, you'll get a little bit of some air bubbles on the inside just from pouring the urethane into the bottle like this. So I twirl the bottle nice and slow so that the pool of urethane in the bottle can go over and pick up any of those air bubbles and basically eliminate them. Now I slowly am turning the bottle so that the clear coat can work its way towards the opening of the bottle. It's pretty thick, so you can kind of work it a little bit. I would say it's the consistency of like somewhere between milk and heavy cream, something like that. And I'm able to control the clear coat coating the inside of this bottle and you can see it's like magic it just becomes clear as both sides now have clear coat on them and you can see through it now I get a little bit of some imperfections at the top some of this is on the inside mainly there's a little bit of imperfections on the outside I can see them now of course that it's clear coated on the inside and the outside the inside ones come from me and the surface tension from the liquid as the clear coat is running out it'll tend to beat up there at the edge but also a little bit from the top of the bottle on the outside but this is easy to sort of fix what we need to do is basically sand those surfaces nice and flat and smooth. We don't want to sand through the clear coat. We just need to sand the surface nice and smooth and flat. And I do this through a series of sandpapers. I probably start with maybe six or 800, so pretty fine. And I'm working my way up to a thousand and then two thousand and ultimately maybe three thousand. We'll finish the end with some polishing compound here. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. It's not cheap. Now the inside I don't have a pad so to speak to get on the inside there so I need to do that by hand and I'm using a little felt pad. This is from a Dremel tool with the same polishing compound. And I just have to do this by hand several times because um, I don't want to mess up the finish and I want to keep it nice and uniform. And I'm getting some pretty good results. I got a little bit more I got to do by hand. This is a real sort of trial and error kind of thing. You just got to watch it, work it, and ultimately with some patience, you can get some pretty good results. That's pretty nice. 
Next, we need to 3D print the cap. And so this is FDM printed. This is a flexible PLA. I'm just trimming off a little bit of the uh, printing strings, whatever you want to call it. This is printed on a dual filament Ultimaker, so I had water soluble supports, and that's what you saw the part go into in the beginning to dissolve the supports around the threads. And we'll put that into the top to seal the bottle. All done. Shoot some photos, put it in a box, send it to the client. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.